welcome back to the Mr. RV Tech channel. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that my videos have helped you in your RV adventures. Today we're going to discuss suburban water heaters. This particular model that we're going to talk about today is a gas electric 12 gallon model from Suburban. So if you would just come with me over here. If you look very closely it shows you the internals of the glass lined steel tank. That's one thing that differentiates Suburban from Atwood. The Atwood water heaters have an aluminum tank. Suburban has a glass lined steel tank. So there are a few things in here we're going to take a look at. The insulation of course on the exterior. The water storage tank here obviously. The electric heating element is located here. We have our thermostat located here. The anode rod and the pressure relief valve is sticking inside the tank as well. We're not going to be able to see any of that on the actual unit itself today so just wanted to point that out to you. This is what they look like inside. Slide that out. Right? So first let's talk about the basics. This is a 12 gallon model so it's physically a little bit larger and it does hold 12 gallons of water. There's also a 10 gallon model and a 6 gallon model. The best way to find out what you have if you are wondering is to come over here to the label. It will always be in the bottom right hand corner. And right here will be your model number. This particular unit is a SW12DE, which that tells me it's 12 gallons, it's a Suburban, and that it is DSI or direct spark ignition, which means it has gas feature, and also electric. So as we look at all these appurtenances here, uh, first of all, this is the pressure and temperature relief valve. Just like at your house, if this thermostats were to fail, uh, and the pressure built up in here from the heat and boiling water, this would open up and relieve that pressure. <clears throat> Next, as we move down, we've got these rubber buttons here that say push to reset. So what are they? Well, what they are are thermostats. These thermostats are set to 135 degrees. When the water inside the tank reaches that temperature, the uh, thermostats shut off the gas or the electric element, depending on which one you're running on. Now, if you take a look inside, those thermostats are resettable. They have buttons on them. But you'll also notice down below there's another one that looks almost identical. These are what's called an ECO, or some people refer to them as one shots. They are also thermostats and they're redundant safety features. So if this thermostat were to fail and didn't trip and it got to this one, this one will open and that's it. They are not resettable and would need to be replaced. So as we look inside here, the left hand set of thermostat and ECO is our 110 or 120 volt AC power going to the heating element. On the right side is our 12 volt DC thermostat and ECO going to the gas valve and the ignition system on the control board. If these trip, it means that the water exceeded the correct temperature or there is a possibility that there's a wiring issue, uh, but unlikely. Next, moving down, we have our gas valve. This valve here has two solenoids on the rear. That's why there's so many wires. And the reason for that, it's another redundant safety feature so that if one of these did not close the valve all the way, the other one's ensuring that it does get closed if there was a tripping situation or a fire or something of that nature. Next, underneath the gas valve, we have the heating element. This heating element goes inside the tank we have a neutral and 120 volt hot and it heats up just like a, uh, a coil like your oven you see it glowing red it does the same thing inside the tank until the thermostat's satisfied next is our drain plug slash anode rod this particular one is used all the way if we come back to our diagram you can see what an anode rod is supposed to look like it's about three quarters of an inch in diameter this one is bad 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 anode rods should be checked at a minimum especially if you're full timing twice a year uh, the manual will tell you to replace them once a year no matter what and that is a good idea or you'll end up with something like this and the reason i had to replace this water heater is because all of the sediment in the bottom here cut through the glass and got to the steel and actually rusted a hole in the bottom of the steel tank and it leaked inside the camper and that was because in the two and a half years that this customer owned this water heater and RV, they did not check or change their anode rod. And there is a ton of sediment 
copper, iron, calcium. It's just full of it. The whole bottom of the tank's lined with it. Next up, we're going to take a look at the combustion pan. Um, this metal area here is called the combustion pan, and what it's for, it protects if there's a fire or some undesirable situation out here, it can't get inside the RV and burn the walls or the uh, interior at all. So the combustion chamber is actually located in here. Just remove two screws. take that right off of there now you'll notice that this tube that goes inside the tank here is split in half with a divider so the intake is down here this is where our gas and air will enter and the fire will be present and this is the exhaust we've got a pan that aims it up and then out of the RV next we'll take a look at the burner tube and ignition system two three-eighths bolts in the top of this. So there you have it. This is our burner tube. One of the biggest failures that we get out of these is an orange flame where we've got soot going up the side of the RV or uh, poor performance. Spiders like to make nests inside of this tube and the smallest spider web can cause an undesirable flame where our fuel air ratio is not correct and therefore it will not heat water or stay lit or things like that. The ignition system is ran off of the control board. We do have, I believe it's a 50,000 volt igniter here. So we have a uh, post for it to spark off of and this also acts as a flame sensor and we'll take a look at that when we look at the board. Uh, to tell the control that there is a flame present. Right here coming out of the gas valve is our brass orifice. This is something else that can get clogged up. Some people will come in here with a blow gun and blow all the debris out, maybe clean their combustion tube with a blow gun. And they can actually blast rust and other debris into the orifice blocking the gas flow, which again would cause an undesirable operation. So let's talk about testing a water heater element. This is what a brand new element looks like. I'm not going to open this yet. But uh, you've got your post just like you do on the water heater here. You can have a neutral and a hot. It doesn't matter which way they get hooked up. But somewhere on that element or the package, it's going to give you your wattage. In this case, this particular one's 1,440 watts. So there's a couple things we can do. Uh, watts law, of course, to figure out the amperage. But the first thing we want to do is test our voltage. So in order to do this, it's important that we check a few things. First of all, is there power to the RV? Yes, okay, great. Is the electric switch on inside? Yes, it is, okay. We also have an on and off switch located here. Is this on? Yes, it is. So once that's on, the power will come up here and go through these thermostats and then back down to the element. Now we don't have power We're on a table in the driveway here. Do you wanna set your meter to AC voltage? And just take the red lead on the black wire and the black lead on the white wire and you should read around 120 volts or of course that'll fluctuate depending on your power source if that's good the next step is to test the element itself so in order to do that you're simply going to remove these two screws you don't even have to take them all the way off you can just pull them out a little bit wires will come right off of there. Obviously you would want to remove power at this <laughs> juncture before I did that or you get shocked but hopefully that's common sense to most everybody. Now what we can do is an ohms test. If you don't know how to do ohms law you can look it up on Google and find out. So to ohm test this we're checking for resistance in the element. So if we have a low resistance or high resistance we know that it may have burned in half or swelled up uh, from being heated without water around it. It's the most common thing that happens to these elements. So what we want to do is switch our meter to ohms, which is the little upside down horseshoe looking symbol. 
Now you can't do this test with water in the tank because the water will show continuity and resistance. So this tank's empty. Uh, the best thing to do is to drain it and then test it or remove it and test it. So we can take a look here at the ohms rating. And we should be seeing about 10.8. So this is a, still a good heating element. If you also, if you have any doubt and you've got a new one laying around, which I understand most of you don't, but you can test the ohms on the new one and compare it to what yours is reading. And this particular one is 10.8 ohms. So we know that that's a good element. All right, next up, let's talk about the control. Just come up here on top. So you've got all these crazy wires coming out of here. This one here is the igniter. It's the big rubber thick one. And then we have a harness. It's gonna plug into the control board. And this harness would be wired to the coach uh, via these loose wires here. Those are for your interior switches. The control board is pretty basic as far as control boards go. So we have a transformer, several resistors, a relay, and that igniter and flame sensor. The model number is right on this thing, so if you ever need to replace it, just pop it out of the case, and there it is right there, It'll tell you what you need. You can also do it by ordering it from the model number that we took a look at earlier. Either way will work. Now they do make uh, testers for these boards. The one that I have is Fenwall brand, F-E-N-W-A-L, and it works great. The harness plugs right on here, clamp onto the igniter and it'll test this board and tell you whether or not it's good. Uh, they also work for some refrigerator boards and furnaces. So very handy tool to have in your arsenal if you're a do-it-yourself. The last thing I want to show you uh, as far as the front here and power is the 120 volt junction box. So this particular model the schematic is on the box itself and it tells you exactly how everything's wired. And your 120 volt Romex from your coach would come through this hole and you would wire up ground to the green screw, just wrap it around and tighten it, black to black, white to white. So hot to hot, neutral to neutral. Obviously any 120 volt wiring that you're going to do, you do need to remove power from the unit before trying to service it. Next, let's take a look at the back of the water heater. Most people don't get to see this. It's so basic. We have cold water going into the tank and hot water coming out. That's all there is to that. This little guy is a brass check valve. What this does is it prevents cold water from mixing with the hot water. So this can only go out of the tank. You can see the arrow of flow It's etched into the brass. Once you screw that in there, hot water can come out, but cold water cannot go in. When these go bad, you will notice a fluctuation in hot to warm to cold, back to hot, um, while you're taking a shower or something like that. Pretty suspicious of the uh, check valve in that situation. Also, the internals on these check valves. Let me take that back out. These can actually come apart and break. The plastic breaks and the spring and everything goes flying through the pipe or it gets jammed in here and it will literally completely stop the flow of water coming out of your hot water side. Some manufacturers put a check valve on the cold water inlet as well. Um, I don't see the benefit to that, but other than hot water backing up into the cold system, but it's got pressure against it this way, so it doesn't make any sense. All right, real quick. Let's talk about how to test these thermostats. It's really easy, believe it or not. Put this clip back on the orifice. That holds our burner tube in place. So all we need to know is whether or not these guys have continuity. They're normally closed switches. They open whenever there's a failure or the temperature is satisfied. So we can just go to continuity on our meter or tone. That's where you touch your leads together and it beeps. And 
simply go to each one one at a time and check for continuity. All four of these are good. Another thing that can happen, I didn't mention earlier, is these bars can burn in half. Um, I've never observed it to see why that happens, but I have pulled a few out where that has occurred. So obviously, we have continuity from here to here, where the bar is as well. And you would be able to see it anyways if you didn't. So as far as maintenance, let's go back over maintenance. We do want to keep our combustion tube clean. Um, if your RV sits up, bugs will build nests in there, especially mud daubers and wasps, spider webs, things of that nature. Again, spider webs in the burner tube. So this needs to be cleaned periodically. The manufacturer requests that you have it maintained once a year. And if you bought an extended warranty, you'll know that they want you to go have them serviced once a year also to keep your program up. And then <laughs> probably the most important thing with a suburban water heater is this anode rod. This has got to be changed and checked. If you do not, once again, let me explain to you, this unit went two and a half years without a new anode rod and now they have a hole in their tank. And the bill for this job was $1,111 to purchase the water heater, shipping, and install it. Very costly when you can buy a $5 anode rod and just stick it in there. All right, folks, that concludes today's video. Uh, if you have any questions about suburban water heaters or I didn't set, cover something that you're worried about or wondering about, please leave a, a comment down below and I will get back to you. I always respond to my uh, subscribers and anyone, anybody who watches my videos. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. I'm gonna do Coleman air conditioners. Thanks very much, take care.